Hey guys, Scope here. We're back with more Yu-Gi-Oh! The Duelist of the Roses. In the last episode, we kind of uh, shaped our deck and we got into a battle with Weevil and we are fighting him right now. So let's continue. Uh, we're going to end our turn here because I just wasted Winged Trumpeteer, so that's that really. And what is he going to set down? Some crap. He's just going to pretty much try to protect himself. Oh, he's going to send somebody towards us. So since he's going to start sending monsters towards us, we want to build kind of a defense here. See, Dome of the Angel of Silence? He's a fairy. That would have worked on him. Alright, I'm pretty sure I want to waste Aqua Knight here. So we've got a 7 summoning level. We can summon Dome of the Angel of Silence, who's got a 5 ranking. So that's pretty good. He's not going to fusion. That's great. And he doesn't get a uh, terrain advantage here because only plant monsters do. And Fairy King Truesdale is a plant, so there you go. Doma, however, is not a plant. So we're just going to send him forward to let the enemy initiate the attack here. I'll move Aeronite a little closer. And uh, Fairy King Truesdale, we're going to have him attack this thing here. Hopefully, it's a trap. Oh, no. What is it? Okay, it didn't work. All right, Fairy King Truesdale blocked it. So depending on what trap it is, you can like spellbound your monster for a certain amount of turns, which is uh, which kind of just like paralyzes them. So there's that. But apparently the trap was not effective against Fairy King Truesdale. So that is good. That is good. The good thing too is once Doma gets flipped over here, Fairy King Truesdale is going to power him up with his effect. So that's going to be great. We've got nothing left to do. Let's end the turn. Let's see what you got, Weevil. You bitch. And he's going to attack. Big mistake. Oh, 2100, Hunter Spider. But Doma, or, um, Fairy King Truesdale should power him up, shouldn't he? Well, I guess not. Jesus, what the hell? Alright, so there's his Hunter Spider, who is powered up by the terrain, so he's more powerful than us, and I'm pretty sure he's going to kick our ass here. Oh my god, he's jizzing on me! No! He's turning me into an egg. And now I'm dead. Yeah, he kicked my ass there, man. I'm not going to lie. Wow. And victory pose. hi -ya! Yeah, we're going to lose life points for that, naturally. Well, thanks a lot, um, freaking Fairy King Truesdale. You're supposed to help me, asshole. All right, so we're going to want to assume the defensive position now because he's two spaces from us. He can attack us, so we don't want that. Anyway, uh, now we want to start... <coughs> worrying about protecting ourselves um, by the way now I'm going to where is the what button do I press no I don't want to do that what are you doing I don't want this how do I zoom out there we go okay yeah so I guess pressing L2 can make that go off what does L1 do? There we go. There's the options. Okay, so now that you've seen me both die and win a battle, I'm going to turn the monster battles to abbreviate, so it's not going to show them. But if we get on different terrain, maybe I'll show it. All right, so we need to put a trap here. Let's see what Tears of the Mermaid does. Disposable trap. The Spellbind's activated enemy card for one turn and reduces its strength by 500 points. So that's a fairly decent card. And uh, normally I'd put Spirit of the Harp here, but that guy has over 2,000 attack. So I'm going to put Tears of the Mermaid here, and I'm going to put it in defense mode, just because, so he thinks it's a monster, he's going to attack it, and then he's going to be spellbound for one turn, so he's not going to be able to use that card, and it's going to lose 500 attack points, so then we can go start attacking it. Anyway, now with Fairy King Truesdale, I'm going to kind of squish his guy in a corner here, and he's going to probably move into the corner, put a card in between us or something, so let's see what he does. Yeah, he's going to move into the corner, so our plan has worked so far, we got him into a corner, that's good. And you're going to activate my trap card, biatch. So now he's going to be spellbound and up, get a power decrease. So now he can't use that card till his next turn. Or actually the turn after his next turn because it's a full turn that it's spellbound. So you see how it says SB1 there? That means he is spellbound, so he can't move. And now he's down to 1,500 attack points. This is good because now I can beat him with some of my monsters. Well, actually not really. All right, so let me make sure what Fairy King Truesdale's effect was there. Oh, the power of all plant monsters increases by 500 points. Okay, so he's the Fairy King. Yeah, he's plant type, and he increases the attack of plant type monsters. Makes a lot of sense, game. A lot of sense. All right, so are any? do I have any plant types here? Not really. Well, bollocks. Bollocks to it all. I guess I'm just going to put... 
Um, let's get rid of some guys. Key Mace, what's its effect? When this card is flipped face up, shifts all cards to defense position. Yeah, that's actually very useful. I'm probably... Actually, yeah. Let's put that right here, because then I will be able to go on the offensive against our monsters. That'll be great. Alright, so we'll put that there. And actually, since he didn't put a monster in between us to block my attack, I can now move two spaces and attack his deck leader directly. So, big mistake on his part. So, he's going to lose 2,700 life points. He's down to 300. So, generally, what you want... As you can see, he's a higher ranking than us, too. He's one lieutenant. We're just lieutenant. Generally, what he would have done if he was smart is I was here, he could have moved here and then put a card in between us. Therefore, I would have had to attack that card and not got to attack him that turn. That's just, like, basic strategy, but apparently Weevil's being a jackass right now, so, you know, what do you expect? Oh, he's gonna put... Oh, there you go. See, now he's being smart, putting a card in between us. Yeah, I knew he'd go for an attack, though. That's why I put Key Mace in front. So now all of his monsters are changed to defense position. And now his Hunter Spider's gonna become unspellbound after this turn, as you saw. Um, but as you see, I can pretty much kill him right now, because I can move here. He didn't put both cards in between me, so that's kind of his downfall. What is that, 1,600, 1,700 defense? But I'm just going to, you know, keep playing, just because. So we'll summon a Master and Expert, sure. What defense does this guy have? 1,300? Let's kick his ass, just because I can. Just for revenge, bitch. Can't believe you made me lose life points. How dare you. Oh, Master and Expert looks really cool there on the screen. Yeah, and these monsters get these cool 3D effects like of them hovering. It's really nice. I like it. Anyway, let's uh, enough toying around. Let's finish him off. Oh, he had a trap card. No, Infinite Dismissal. That is the worst card ever. Oh, jeez, that's bad. Infinite Dismissal, what it does is, as you can see, um, Fairy King Truesdale is now spellbound for three whole turns. Yeah, so that doesn't count this turn. So he's not going to be in action for quite a while. That's going to suck, so we're going to need to start thinking about other options here. Um, okay, he can't attack me next turn. He won't win. Because, yeah, that's going to be pretty bad. Something you can do, though, is there's actually trap cards that spellbound monsters infinitely, so they will you'll never be able to use them. So it could have been worse, I guess, so let's just let him go. Did I zoom in? I didn't zoom in there, did I? I think I did. I don't know how that keeps happening. Alright, so now he's going to back himself into a corner. He's going to attack my Key Mace. Which is fine, because it was in defense mode. We don't lose any life points. That's great. And I'll kill, kick his ass next turn, so... Oh, he's moving guys out of the way of Master and Expert. That means he can't do anything. Alright, so now we got to wait three turns starting now for Fairy King Truesdale, so that sucks. Alright, so let's see if we can beat this guy down. Is that a... No, that's Forest Panel. Alright. Alright, how much attack did that guy have? 16... Oh, he's got 1,100 now, because he's on... Uh... What is he on? Is he on a wasteland? No, he's on forest. I wonder why his attack went down. What was he on before? He was on... Why did his terrain up? What's his effect? I just want to know. Oh, okay. I don't know why his attack went down, but alright, whatever. Alright, let's get rid of all these crap fest, craptacular guys like these guys. And let's just summon the one we want to here. See if we get any fusions. Nope, that's alright. Okay, cool. So now with Moonlight Maiden, we will attack this bastard. And he's powering up other wind monsters on the field, so we don't want that. There you go, 400 life points. I think that's all he had less than that left, so that might have won it for us. Yep, there we go. His fault, man. Shouldn't have left it. And we win our first duel. We are awesome, yes. And look at all the backgrounds here, like all these reflectors. It's so cool. I don't know, I like it. So that's our first duel, guys. The tutorial duel, if you will, but except that you can lose. Except you die. And now here is a cool concept of this game that I really like. The Graveyard's Slot Machine. Pretty much any card that was in the opponent's graveyard, you now have the chance to win by stopping the slot machine on it. And if they didn't have very many cards on their uh, graveyard, then they will just be replaced with fake traps, which suck. You don't want to get those. Now the cool thing about the graveyard Slot Machine is I keep trying to stand up and my headphones don't want me to is that you can, if you get stop it on three of the same cards, you get a super rare card. So that's how you get really good cards in this game. This is how you're supposed to win cards. So I want infinite dismissal, that's good, but I also want that negate attack. I'm going to try to stop three negate attacks. Alright, we got one. Oh, one too short. Alright, well now we better just try to get like infinite dismissal. There we go, cool. Alright, so we got a Negate Attack, a Fake Trap, and Infinite Dismissal. Negate Trap and Infinite Dismissal are both really good cards, so that's good. 
But like I said, as always, if you can, try to land it on three of the same, because then you will get super rare cards, like really good cards. All right, we beat him. Do we get the white rose card? No! No! I, I, I lost! This can't be happening! Uh, uh, uh. And yes, so if you have equal or lesser def deck cost, you get the rose card. So we won a rose card from Weevil! And what is this? Two more destinations open up. Oh, great. Great! But anyway, as you can see down there, we've now got a rose card, a white rose card. So only seven more remain. But don't worry, not every enemy here is holding a rose card. So there will be much more than seven battles. We're at ten minutes. We can keep going. So we've unlocked two more locations here uh, at Towton. Towton. We've got Keith, uh, Bandit Keith. And as you can see, he's got the British flag on his head. It Britain. And he's got a 1,027 debt cost. So that guy is quite the foe. And then over here we have Pegasus Crawford, who's actually the leader of the Rose Crusaders. We've got him already over here at Lancashire. And he's got 1254 debt cost. Now, this guy is one of the most overpowered and ridiculous enemies to fight in the game. So we'll be waiting to fight him for quite a while. Anyway, I guess it's time. I think I just want to go to Tewksbury here and fight Rex Raptor. He's got 960 debt cost. So if you want those strong monsters you took out of your deck, you can put them back in or do codes to get a few more stronger monsters. I'm actually not going to do that. I already feel bad for putting Sword Stalker in my deck, so we're gonna we're just gonna fight him as if as the underdogs 854 against 960. So let's go start. The Rose Duelist, eh? I'm not impressed. In fact, I'll crush you to a pulp with my dinosaur deck. Like, totally. Uh, uh, uh. What? Like, are we battling? Is this a duel? Totally, man. Oh my god. I'm sorry. I'm not a very good uh, Beavis impression. Sorry. Or Butthead. I don't know which one that is even. I haven't watched that show in so long. Alright, so we got Rex Raptor here. And he's got two-headed King Rex as his deck leader. And these guys... This guy's a major. He's already going to have, like, crazy. Look at his look at his leader abilities. Movement boost for same type friendlies. Yeah, we don't even have that. So this field is going to be all Wasteland to support his uh, dinosaur monsters. And then we've got a new field type here. This is Labyrinth. You cannot travel on the Labyrinth squares unless you have certain monsters that can have the ability to travel on labyrinths. So pretty much these are like walls. You have to go around them. As you can see, the deck leaders can't even travel on them. So this guy is going to be quite a strategic battle. We're going to have to start sending enemies towards him. So let's see what we've got to start off. Um, all right, we've got Tears of the Mermaid. We also got Orion. That's really good. Now, I want to kind of build up my deck or my summoning stars there so I can summon Orion because he's pretty good. So I'm going to set Tears of the Mermaid because that doesn't cost any summoning points because it's a trap card. And let's start sending that that way. So any monster he sends down here is going to get paralyzed and lose 500 attack points. So that's a good start. So what are you going to do, Rexy Poo? Um, oh, I thought he was going to summon there. Yeah, no, he's just getting rid of cards. All right, start sending it towards my trap, Weach. All right, now what do we got? All right, this guy, the Thunder, he's effect. What does he do? I know he has quite a good. Well, this card's face in defense position. All machine monsters are reduced 500 points. That'll come very useful against Bandit Keith. As you know, he's got a deck, a machine deck, so that would be a good ability to use against him. But as for now, Rex doesn't really have much machine monsters, so. Alright, we can summon Orion now, the Fairy King. Um, so since we're gonna. <coughs> whoa, since we're gonna summon him, let's get rid of these craptacular monsters and summon him. If any of these guys fusion, I'm going to be pissed. Okay, no, they didn't. Cool. All right, so we might as well send Orion down there. I'm pretty sure he's going to be able to kill him, but we might be all right. Let's move this here. See what he does. Your turn. I love that two-headed King Rex, dude. That's so epic. What do you got? And that's going to paralyze you. Oh, it's his Yurabi. Tears of the Mermaid. All right, well, Yurabi isn't his strongest monster. So that thing had, what, 1,800 attack? Powered it down 600, so now it's down to 1,200. There you go, and he's spellbound for one turn. So now we know what he's dealing with on that side. Let's see what else I got. Oh, we got another Orion. Ooh, and Sword Stalker. So now that we have Sword Stalker, pretty much once you see him in your hand, you're going to want to start trashing as many monsters as possible from your hand. Because the more monsters you have in your graveyard, the more power this guy has. So how many monsters did I get rid of last turn? Two? Uh, yeah, we've got two in our graveyard now, so his attack's 2,200. I want to get him to at least 3,000 just to ensure that we're going to be okay against this guy. So that would be 24, 25, and then we'll just summon Orion at the end here. 
Now, when you fusion monsters, it doesn't count as another monster in your graveyard. So be wary of that now. Orion can kick this guy's ass, so we're going to make sure he stays forward. This Orion... Hey, I'll move him forward, sure. I don't want him to think I'm bluffing. <coughs> Alright, what are you going to summon now? Are you going to go over your Yorabi card? Sometimes they'll do that. Oh, he's going to attack. Shit! He's got another two-headed King Rex! What a cheating bastard. Alright, so that's 300 life points, and he's pretty close to our guy, and he can move two squares. Oh, Sparks, that's a... Uh... Yep, that's 50 direct damage to your life points, so watch out for that. His Yorabi is also no longer spellbound over there, as you saw, so he's going to turn it to defense position. Oh, look at this. I don't have enough summoning points to summon any of your monsters. This will happen, so make sure you are careful. All right, so he's pretty... I'm going to move here just in case. Uh, Orion, the Battle King, I'll move you forward, and I'll let that Yorabi attack me if he wants to. I don't know if he'll have the balls to attack or if he'll go defense mode. Let's see. Let's see what she does. Ah, you dumbass. You just lost 600 life points. Orion, kick his ass. There we are. Is it Orion or Orion? I like Orion. Yeah, that two-headed King Rex is getting ever too close. I don't, I don't appreciate it at all. He's making me uncomfortable, man. All right, so how much attack do we have now for... Okay, let's see. We can check our... R1 is graveyard. All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven now because he killed Orion. That's right. So we got 2,700 attack now on Sword Stalker. So if we just get rid of three more, I will have my desired 8,000. So we will do so. Um, Fairy King Truesdale gets a shit power increase on this field, but I'm still not going to waste. Actually, I am going to waste them. And we're going to summon Sword Stalker. So get rid of all these bastards. There you go. And now I'm going to move Sword Stalker right here, and I'm going to let this guy attack me and pretty much kill himself. And uh, let's start moving... Sword Stalker, he's, he's going to pretty much be able to tank this whole row. So I'm going to leave him there. I'm going to start moving Air Knight Parshath up this way. Let's uh, move Orion up. Sure, why not? It's really hard to track reps in a corner in this map because he's just crazy. He really is. And power increase, what do we got now? 3,100 attack. Sorry, buddy, but you're dead. 1,000 damage. And if you really want, you can hold your Sword Stalker and just pretty much get rid of all your monsters. So that when they attack you, they pretty much lose all their life points in one go. And man, I just lost 900. But um, something you'll notice is when you go to attack monsters, which is what just happened there, sometimes your types will be conflicting. And what it does is if you attack that monster, you'll be get spellbound if you after the battle, after the damage has been calculated. So thankfully, Orion had a opposite type, this guy, so it spellbound him for one turn. And thank God, because that guy's got 2,700 whopping friggin' attack. Anyway, now we're just going to start moving Sword Stalker down the rows here to try and stop that guy. That guy's got 2,700 attack. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Silver Bow and Arrow. Can Sword Stalker equip that? I don't think so. No, he cannot. But I think uh, I think Doma the Angel of Silence can. Uh, Silver Bow and Arrow. Yep. How much attack does that increase it? 500 points. Yeah, fairy. So that'll take him up to 2,100. Sadly, he still will not be able to deal with this Brachio Radius. Brachio, or is it Brachio Radius? Brachio Radius, yeah. So we're going to want to move back here, and I'll... Uh, well, there's not really much I can do. We'll just set the Silver Bone Arrow here for now, power up somebody with it on the next turn. So as for now, Sword Stalker is our really only kind of option that we really got going. And I think he's going to start... No, he's not. Okay. Sometimes he'll start sending monsters around the very outside, depending on how things go. Alright, so what have we got now? I can now summon Doma. This guy, oh no, it's not fairy. So, yeah, shit. Might as well get rid of these guys, because they're absolute crap. Oh, wait, what am I doing? I had to put those on top of each other to get the power bonus. What do we got there? Oh, that night guy. Oh, these guys fusion. Awesome. What does this make? Oh, the Dark Witch. Awesome. And she's got 1,800 attack. Now, if I would have left my Silver Bone Arrow, she'd have 2,300 attack now, but it still wouldn't matter against this Brachio Radius. But that's fine. Better than nothing. All right, I'm going to move back over here to my default position. Sword Stalker, start making your way over there, buddy. Um, yeah, but don't waste too many monsters like I'm doing now, unless you're powering up a Sword Stalker or something, because you're going to need monsters to defend you from attacks if their enemies start getting really close. 
which they are inevitably going to do eventually. Some of these battles can go pretty long, so be prepared for this, folks. What are we at, 20 minutes? Well, let's just keep going for now. Let's just see what I got. Ooh, Mountain Field. That will power, not power up Dark Witch. She is a fairy. But it will power down his Brachia Radius, and that's really what I want to do. So, but if I put it over here, I don't think it will affect him. Well, you know what? I'm going to do it. I've actually got quite the plan. It's, it's going to be a future in plan, but I think I've got a way to take down his Brachio Radius here. Alright, so that's not going to affect Sword Stalker. But it does turn the space I'm on here to... Uh, terrain up for Dark Witch, which takes her to 2300. And as you can see, he's a terrain up, so his attack's going to go to 2200. So if he comes to attack me on this field, he's going to die. So... What I'm actually going to do is, yeah, leave Dark Witch here. And then I've actually got a plan. Next turn, I'm going to summon Hoshinigan in a corner. And as you can see, his power up is own light monster strengthened by 300 points when this card is flipped face up. So if I flip him face up, Dark Witch will gain another 300 attack points. And then I'll definitely be able to kick his ass. So that's that. But as for now, we're going to leave Dark Witch there and move Sword Stalker down the row even further. His slow and steady ascent towards the enemy base is... And he's just building up defenses there. Those are probably trap cards that I'm going to run right into, but I'm okay with that. And as you see now, Brachio Radius is down. So cool, he lost another 100 life points, and we took down the Brachio Radius that was going for our life points. So that's one thing down. But our next worry is we got to start sending monsters down that way, otherwise he's just going to keep sending monsters to attack. But if I take Dark Witch off of this panel, she loses you know, her 500 attack bonus. Well, we can remedy this with... Hoshinigan! So Hoshinigan, what I'm going to do is put him face up. I'm going to move him towards the corner to keep him safe. And as you can see, these powers, including himself, they all get a 500 point attack bonus. So now, she's at 2600 and 2100 on the regular ground. So 2100 is alright. I'm going to, and she can move two here, so I'm going to actually move her here. I think she can hold her own now. If I would have equipped her with the silver bow and arrow, it would have been, it would have been great, but I didn't. So there's that. All right, um, did I move Sword Stalker yet? No. All right, we've almost... He's probably going to start running away in a second here. Once Sword Stalker starts getting really close. Oh, he's going to send a guy down that way. That's not good. That's going to kill Hoshin again. I should probably... do something about that. Fucker! All right, well, let's see. Did he move that guy in defense mode? No, he didn't. Well, let's move Dark Witch closer and move Sword Stalker closer. All right, we pretty much got him almost pinned in here. If Dark Witch can hold up, we might be all right. All right, we've got a Mavelis here, which um, I believe if you combine this and this, it will make a Firebird. I'm gonna try it, but I'm gonna summon it over here on the uh, on the power up area. Yeah, I don't think Lightweight. Let's see. Um, oh yeah, I gotta get out of summoning mode. All night monster strengthened by 300 points on this card of slave fist up. Okay, so it's not going to. All right, it's not going to power up any more light monsters. All right, so let's see. Oh no, it doesn't fusion. All right, that's cool. Well, Mavelis still has 1,800 attack points here, so that's pretty good. All right, so I guess that will uh, might want to move Hoshinigan in defense mode here. All right, let's see what this guy's doing. Yeah, he's going to move closer. Going to move that guy around. Oh, move out of way for Sword Soccer. Thank you. Um, oh yeah, he's gonna start moving away already, what a bitch. Oh, he's not gonna attack me with that, it must be a magic card. Hmm, good to know. Alright, Sword Stalker, um, psh, just, what can I say, pin this guy in. Alright, let's start making our forward ascent, and oh, equal attack, we're gonna take each other out here. Oh, well that sucks. So now we have nobody down that road, that kind of blows. Hmm, well we're gonna have to fix that, I suppose. Wish I would've sent Mavelis down that row now. Oh, this is actually good. Let's move a... Uh, let's put Key Mace here. In order to turn monsters into defense mode, if necessary. And let's move Mavelis a little bit farther down there. Huh. Alright, that looks good. Uh, this battle is kind of turning crappier. Our only hope at this point is to... Oh, you're going to attack me? Shit, I didn't expect that. Well, it turns you to defense mode, so ha, bitch. What are you doing? Oh, he's starting to attack me from all angles here. This is a problem. 
This is a big problem. So what was that? A Yurabi? It's got 1,300 defense. All right, we'll definitely want to move that into defense mode. Uh, what do we got here? We got absolute shit. All right, I'm going to set this up as a defense here just to kind of make sure nobody gets through. Oh, wow, it even turned my Mavelis into defense mode. Well, let's actually... Mavelis, you kind of suck, to be honest. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna leave you there. Why did it turn my sword star? It turns everything to defense position, I guess. That's kind of crazy. Alright, this is looking like shit, but, uh... Ugh, our only hope now is that he, like, we can attack something with sword stalker that he doesn't leave it in defense position, but I doubt that's gonna happen. He's not that stupid. At least I don't think he is. Let's see. Oh no, he keeps moving things away like a little biatch, having seven key odds. The good thing is he's moving his deck master where we are able to chase him down this row that leads right to me. Now this is, this is good and bad. Bad because now he can summon monsters directly close to me and attack me, but good because I can also summon monsters directly next to him and attack him, so that's good. Uh, Spirit of the Harp is protecting me. I'm going to let him attack that because then he's going to lose, let's see, 500... Is 1300. He's gonna lose 1200 life points for that, so that's good. Well, let's see what I got. Hmm. Well, I've got eight summoning points, so I can afford to waste some shit here. Do, are any of these guys affect monsters? No. All right. Well, I'm actually going to start getting rid of these guys because I really. Oh, this guy gets 1200 attack on or 2200 attack on mountain. Yeah, no fusions. Fusion, ha! Um, actually, I'll just leave you there. Sword Stalker, did I move you yet? No, I didn't. Let's make sure. Now with Sword Stalker in this row, we can assure this guy's not getting out of this row. So that's good. Mavelis, you just stay there. Push in again. He can't get to you yet, so stay there. Spirit of the Harp, definitely stay there. All right, let's do it. Let's wait for him to utterly destroy himself. That's, he makes a bad move by summoning right away. I generally try to wait till the end of the turn after I move all my guys to summon just to see how the cards are going to fall. Like, because he has no idea his Yurabi's going to get its ass kicked right here. You know, but... And he already summoned, so... Now he can't do anything about it. Boom! And as long as my Spirit of the Harp can withstand all of his monster's attacks, then I've got a, a pretty much a blockade right here. And then I could just bring Swordstalker down this row and get closer and closer to him. And eventually, he'll get right here to where he can't attack. Because he'll be stuck next to Spirit of the Harp. And he won't be able to summon because of the Labyrinths. So, I'm going to wedge him in here. And either Swordstalker is going to get to attack him and kill him. Or I could just turn Spirit of the Harp into attack mode and kill him. So, and eventually, he's going to have to start overrunning his own monsters here to stay alive. So, Hoshinigan, you stay there. Actually... Yeah, because you're not powering up him, because he was placed after. So I don't really need to summon here, but let's see what I got. Oh yeah, look at all these guys have zero attacks. These are all my weak-ass monsters. I need to get rid of those guys. I'm actually going to place Magician... Oh, maximum numbers of monsters on the field. Now what that means is you can only have... How many monsters do I have on the field? Yeah, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. And if you place that monster on the field, when it says that, that monster will instantly die. Now a way to get over that is you can overwrite a monster. For example, like this. Just place it on top of it, and it will overwrite it. So I'm going to turn Magician of Faith face... I'm going to leave it face down for now, because I don't know if I want one of his magic cards yet, but we'll wait to see how this goes. So Sword Stalker, kill that thing. Two Mouth Dark Ruler. Yeah, you're dead, buddy. And now we are right next to his Deck Master, so he's going to have to over... He's going to have to go over one of his monsters and kill it. So let's see how that goes. See, a lot of these battles are going to be long like this. This is how it's going to be, so get used to it. Especially early in the game when we don't have good enough cards yet. Alright, what is that? Practical? Oh god. Those are like one of his strongest monsters. Look at that, 2400 attack. So we're going to need to set something up to kind of stop that bastard. <coughs> we're probably going to have to just run away from him until I can get Sword Stalker in his prime position. Alright, so is he going to move? Yep, he overwrote one of his cards. And then he's going to summon something behind him. And there you go. And he's going to leave that guy there, naturally. 
Alright, so now, as per usual, we will bring Swordstalker over this guy, who is Mega Zowler. Mega Zowler is one of his scariest monsters, too. As you see, that 2300 attack, that's pretty, pretty bad. Alright, now he's either going to have to overwrite his Yurabi, so next turn, he's either going to have to take a hit from Swordstalker and die, or Spirit of the Harp and die. The only thing is, now we've got this Practical here, so we need to put up a defense. Bright Castle is a really good card. That powers up. Light monsters by 500 points, or by, does that say 5 or 6? I can't really tell. Looks kind of close. So I could actually use that to power up Spirit of the Harp if I wanted, but I don't need to. Instead, I'm just going to summon a random monster here to hold my defenses. And I'm actually going to turn Magician of Faith face up now, and I'm going to take... Ooh, I could use Sparks or Invigoration. What is that? It's power of Earth monsters, alright. I'm actually going to take Mountain. And it automatically summons it on the field for you, so watch out. Now, using it there is actually useless, because that's where I used it before, so it would just turn more of it to... But actually, if I... Can I use it? Oh, I can't use it this turn. Alright, fine. Alright, so now we just wait. This is the turn that's going to make or break it here. Let's see what he does, if he can pull something out of his ass or not. Alright, he's going to practical attack that guy, I figured. How did he just overwrite it? What? what? Oh, because it had zero defense. It didn't matter. He would have won anyway. So next turn we might be in trouble. All right, so he's gonna overwrite his Yurabi. That's fine, and he ends his turn. So I'm just gonna move Swordstalker a little bit closer just for shits and gigs. And he's only got 1,100 life points left. So now, oh, I go to 800 attack points there. Oh no, that's not good. Fuck. I didn't think about that. Okay, well next turn he's definitely screwed. All right, so I'm actually gonna move away here and kill my Magician of Faith, which is fine because I don't need it. And here I will put just another random monster to defend me. And there we go. And he can't destroy my Spirit of the Harp either, because once he goes on a mountain, he's going to lose attack. So now I'll move mountain up here. And it's not letting me... There we go. Oh, this isn't going to do anything, but oh well. It's going to take his uh, two-headed Rex onto a mountain square, which is something, I guess. Oh, so now, now that he's on mountain square... If I turn Spirit of the Harp into attack mode, I don't lose any attack here. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. Didn't even mean to make that strategy, but I did. And with that, guys, we had quite the close battle. And we defeated Rex Raptor. Hell yeah. We win, baby. Air Knight Parshath for the win. That was close. That was a good battle. See? That's a normal battle. Uh, Alright, let's see what slot card we get. Sorry if this is a long episode, guys, but I kind of wanted to save because I didn't want to record another one here. My throat's getting kind of dry, so. Um, I want some of his monsters because those are really good monsters, but I don't. it's hard to aim for those to try and get three of those in the slot. I'm trying to aim for Brachio Radius. But I'm going to aim for Invigoration, actually. Oh, I got two. Oh, two headed King Ranks. That's a good card, though. I don't see another two-headed King Rex in there. Oh, yeah, I do. It's only one slot. Yes, baby! Okay, all right, we got to do this. I see it. It's right there. Oh, no, I missed! Well, we got a two-headed King Rex and a Mega Zowler. If you get two of the same, by the way, you don't get two of the cards. You just get one, so... That's why it's risky to go for this, but we got two of his best cards. So that's good. We missed the two-headed King Rex by one, by the way. It was right under that Sparks. So actually, I guess we missed it by two, but, you know. Anyway, we should get a right rose card from Raptor. What? Me? Lose? <laughs> I don't believe it. Oh my god, like, totally. Yeah, screw that. I have a shitty voice for him. And that is our second rose card, baby! And that's going to open two more paths. The paths are just abundant as balls here. By the way, you could go to Stonehenge, but I don't think it would do anything. Anyway, over here we open Exiteer, which has Necromancer. Now, this guy is different. This is one of the other strategies that's going to be employed against you is low deck cost. As you can see, this guy has a super low deck cost of 795. So we're going to have to get rid of a lot of our good cards just to even fight this guy. So that's something you can worry about. And over here we have St. Albans, which has Darkness Ruler. And he's got 982 deck cost. So we have got uh, quite a bit of options here now. So... In the next episode, we will fight one of these people, I suppose. Probably Necromancer. Wait, yeah, probably Necromancer. So anyway, I'm going to save after we have beaten Rex Raptor. Hell yeah. And I guess we're going to have to do a bit of deck modifying next time. So I'll see you guys next time on Let's Play Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelists of the Roses. Bye-bye.